folks, this is Wear and Tear, yet another YouTube Outdoor Inc. Year Review channel. Now today I want to talk about the 72 hours backpack. And I'm doing this video in request to one of my subscribers. She asked me, can you do one of those backpacks that allow you to stay outdoors for three days? So I did prepare my backpack and it took me almost 72 hours to prepare it because you go through your stuff and you think you have everything but then when you go through your stuff and when you think about it and you actually discover that half of the stuff is missing or that you do not even have essential gear that you would like to have on your trip. Now this is a outdoor and adventure backpack. It's not really prepared on the, the viewpoint of being a uh, emergency preparedness backpack. It's really a backpack that should allow you to stay outdoors for at least three nights and just have a good time, be able to explore the area and yeah, just enjoy nature. Now, talking about a few specs of this backpack, it's a Molly compatible backpack. It's one of those very modular systems. You can strap stuff, you can gear, you can strap gear to it very easily. You can also uh, take it off the backpack and take it to your hip, whatever. So a very modular system. This is actually the backpack that I use on a almost daily basis. Sometimes I even take it to work. So I'm very familiar with it. And so far it is maxed out right now with all the gear. It has about 17 kilograms, which is still fairly comfortable. You need to get used to it, of course. But I'm still fairly maneuverable. Can still do all the movements I want to do. I can still pull my own weight. I can do push-ups, pull-ups, whatever. And it's fixed solidly to my back. So at least for my present physical condition, this type of weight and this type of backpack is just fine. So what I want to say with this is there is probably not a 72 hours backpack that is suitable for everyone. Now, also a word of caution. We're having summer now in Austria. I have not put any stuff in there that helps me to keep temperature except a few heat pads that I always have in my uh, emergency stuff because they're just highly useful. Now I'm assuming that you go out and you have fitting clothes with you, the right clothes for the right circumstances. Here in Austria the weather goes from freezing cold way into the minus up to well sweating hot like today and you cannot pack for all these type of weather patterns and sometimes the weather changes also quickly if i would know that the weather changes or if i actually had packed for three days i would have brought a soft shell jacket but i didn't bring it today because it would look kind of silly also the way i set my backpack up there are no weapons on the outside the large knives and everything is inside the backpack because for travel, travel up here, I have to travel through uh, urban areas and you know some people are a little bit tense these days if you run around with a machete if you know what I mean. Front side of the backpack, hydration pack, 2.5 liters, enough water for a day, even for a hot day. Uh, there is a little flashlight right here, night core thumb, which has a few signal modes, blinky modes on top of it. So it's just quick access, it's very nice. For serious work in the darkness, one of the best, best headlamps for money that you can get is the Skillhunt H03. I've done a review of this nice little lamp on my channel. Here it's locked out, so it doesn't activate by accident. Now it should be ready. Yep. So headlamp is just part of the gear. Why would you not carry one around? powered by lithium ions, but I'll talk about my uh, electricity or energy concept a little bit later. And on the other side here, I got a ready pouch, I'm going to call it that way. I have a Letterman, no not really a Letterman, it's a Ganso multi-tool. Now what's nice about this Ganso, it costs you about 20 to 30 bucks and it gives you as much value and quality as one of the entry levels entry-level letterman so a lot of blades are one hand opening like this little saw here and those blades are arrested 
so it arrests almost all the plates and almost all the tools it's just really high quality for a very for a very low price however it is an investment in terms of weight if you're willing to carry it around you have a good motor tool now let's look inside the backpack here is my uh, video equipment GoPro and uh, a regular camera that I'm using right now. Here I have my sleeping bag, a light sleeping bag. Uh, up to zero degrees it should work, at least if you wear clothes. Uh, it seems to be a fair deal to me. Uh, of course here we have uh, external pouches. This is my mobile phone. There's uh, inside you find my um, some handkerchiefs or protective goggles. And of course my power bank, 10,000 milliamps. Uh, that comes with a little charger, a uh, charger by Olight. You can pick up for 10 bucks. They charge everything, every type of lithium ion battery, no matter which size. Even, even regular rechargeable batteries can be charged with this charger. So you hook, hooked it up to the power bank and you just find energy wise I decided against a, a solar panel because uh, uh, this stuff is really cumbersome and 10,000 milliamps is a lot of energy is certainly enough to keep your flashlights well charged uh, you don't always have to use them on max of course now we have two extra pouches here oh, this one got dirty doesn't matter it's part of job description get dirty uh, my fire starting kit, which is uh, really nothing too great. Uh, electrical tape, you never know when you need that. And uh, some spare batteries, uh, those are CR123A, those are for my big flashlight, my primary flashlight. Now, this flashlight is uh, typically powered by two 18650 rechargeable cells 3400 milliamps Panasonic in this case but you can also run it with those four 123A primaries lithium primaries they have the advantage you can store them for a long long time and they're more cold resistant they perform better in severe cold than their regular rechargeables um, Generally speaking, in winter time, you shouldn't have your power bank uh, and even your flashlights uh, in your backpack. You should carry it, if possible, close to the body because a little bit of body warmth is really good for those uh, lithium ion batteries. Uh, they don't like cold, um, their power output decreases greatly, decreases rapidly if it's getting colder. No, but now is the perfect time for those kind of batteries. This flashlight uh, puts out 2400 lumens. Uh, this is a very low mode right now. It's absolutely water resistant. It's super tough stainless steel basil. So uh, if, a dog's com if a dog comes too close to you, you can just show him who's the boss. Oh, it's, it's really solid. It's, it's light lightweight it has a, you can change the different modes so I have this light since a long time it has gone outdoors very often it's reliable it uh, has great throw but also great floodlight it gives you col a good color rendition it's really especially for the woods it's really nice now just put that back in here so what else do we have and there's an, yet another one of those little pouches. Um, there's a pen in there. There's uh, one of those Victorinox knife sharpeners. And there is a rain cover. And some hot hands. Those hot hands are in there. And just in case it's, it, it gets really cold during the night. Even in summer it can get really cold at times. In Austria the weather can just turn on you. Um, now this is the emergency compartment, just in case I ever hurt myself, which is 
highly likely there is yet another first aid blanket in there, some bandages, or two emergency blankets actually, gloves, uh, medication is on the outside, uh, I don't know, I have some old antibiotics in there and some pain pills, uh, should probably bring some allergy pills, but I always forget those. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope I'm gonna be fine with this kit. It's comparable to what you have in the car. It's not, mu not much more, actually, it's less than what you should have in the car by law here in Austria. But it should be fine. As long as I don't hurt myself, right? <laughs> so, okay, here we have a dry bag. Uh, I think five liter dry bag. You can use it to keep your stuff dry. You can use it to transport additional things or to actually collect water and bring it to your campsite. So those dry bags, they weigh almost nothing. Uh, they should definitely come to any trip. Just uh, open it up like this, unwrap it. And good to go. So, oh, this is a special, this is a power bank actually that I modified a little bit. It has a better rechargeable battery in there now, uh, but it also serves as a light and it gives you red light and blinky mode. So, an additional power bank and uh, it serves as a lantern and a beacon. And it's well proven too, uh, it runs for, for many many hours on max mode, which is about 100 lumens of floodlight, easily for 9 hours I think. So this is the exterior, of course you see this is all molly based, very modular, depending on the emission. You can build your backpack easily or you can actually get stuff off the backpack, like you can put that on your belt, whatever. Now you see you don't have any knives or so on the outside, but again, this is uh, the legal requirement here. Don't want to get in trouble unnecessarily. Now, the inside, the main compartment. Now, you might laugh at me, I just have some, have, have some canned food in there. Those are 800 gram, 800 gram cans. And I know this is not the best stuff to have in your backpack. It's very heavy, it's very bulky, but you know what, it's very tasty, it's easy to prepare, and it contains a lot of water. So each of those cans is 800 grams. The energy density is not too high, but it's also not too low. But it definitely contains a lot of water, which is a good thing. And this is my cooking gear. Of course, this is filled up with stuff. Um, anything that you need around the outdoor kitchen, just in the back here, sugar, salt, candy, napkins, spork, some additional peanuts, so some additional calories in there, so that's the outdoor kitchen, let's put that aside. Now, big camp building knife, machete type of knife. You don't have to carry that around. I just put it in there to see whether it still fits. Uh, I tested it out, this out on my video that I put online yesterday. And I think it would be highly useful to build a camp to clear out an area or to fight a bear, which we don't have here. So here we have a emergency tent for two people, which is basically a tarp, I think, and you can just need some power cord and you're good to go, you have a tent. Um, oh, the hygiene package, <laughs> toilet paper, uh, some wash gloves, soap, candles in case you, you're out with your wife and you want to have a romantic evening, right? Turn on those candles. Uh, toothbrush and uh, whatever, it's all in this kit. Um, yeah, some disinfection towels are in there as well. A sewing kit. 
and a face a facial mask just in case uh, I don't know building collapse and you uh, there's dust everywhere I don't know just put it in there it has very little weight might come in handy one day uh, I have a hydration system in there 2.5 liters of bladder which is awesome but I also want a bottle just in case the hydration system leaks and plus this has a little bit of calories the second one bottle has uh, 140 calories that's nice and it comes with magnesium and uh, whatever some taste calcium probably tastes like artificial berry but definitely useful now some cable ties you never know when you need those for whatever reason you need them uh, spare socks merino socks very good quality some underwear probably yeah some underwear I don't show you those they might be holy <laughs> okay that's all that I have in there now let's continue this pack of peanuts unsalted peanuts you can pick it up for very little money um, and it has an energy density Per 100 grams you have 628 kilocalories so this pack has more than 3,000 calories even if you don't like peanuts unless you have a peanut allergy you should bring something like this outdoors outdoors this is one day worth of calories now the total uh, amount of calories I have in the different compartments of this backpack is, uh, is about I did the I did the math is about 8,000 calories so more than 2,600 calories per day so you should be fine uh, on top of it I have my McDonald's voucher card with me I might just walk into the next McDonald's and get myself a burger so, but no generally you should be able to survive on this amount of calories for three days uh, technically you wouldn't have to eat for three weeks but then you grow weak and you grow crazy it's not fun so we don't do that yeah uh, speaking of the calories some crackers they're already cracked um, some muesli bars some sugar uh, some protein bars some uh, something to chew on so this alone this is an additional thousand calories at least could also bring some Snickers or so, but the chocolate really gets disgusting in the summer. You can still eat it though, it's not a problem. So this is what I do for food. Now what else do we have? Okay, so there's another major compartment down there. Bug spray. You need it here. They just start eating you up. And my trusty Gerber strong arm, which is my primary knife. Besides, of course, a small folder that I carry on me, also from Ganso. Which brings us to the question, how many knives do you need? <laughs> as many as you can carry without weighing yourself down too much. So, okay, ah yeah, there's my folding stove. I did a video review on the folding stove as well. It works super. It's really a great addition. It's worth its weight. And of course, my Baco Laplander, uh, which is, uh, you can build a whole camp with this thing. It's really an awesome little saw. Okay, so far, I think we went through all. Ah, there is my hat. Uh, looks awesome, right? I look like a total nerd. I nerd. just want to stay outside for 72 hours. This might suffice. Should work. If you have any ideas how to do stuff better, how to get better equipment, how to manage the food better, or maybe you spotted something that is just not there, which is totally important for wilderness survival. So please write a comment and don't save me any criticism, I can easily take it. Uh, okay folks, I forgot to show you one thing and that's my water management. There is the hydration system in the backpack, 2.5 liters, which is very handy, just drink. Uh, that's enough water for a day. After that, um, 
it would work with a life straw or water filter system very light uh, a little bit bulky but very very light I just have it in there next to the water bladder and uh, of course I also have these uh, pills that you just put into the water and uh, disinfect the water so you can easily collect water in Austria there's enough rivers and streams and the water is decently clean besides uh, microorganisms because we have very strict laws here to protect and preserve the water quality so that's a good thing uh, you probably won't die of thirst